YouTube, how you doing? Uh, welcome to the legend of the liar. Yes, a very unique title, and I'll get to that. Uh, in the blue, we have MSG in my mouth, a 1300 ELO player. And uh, I didn't like the idea of saying the legend of MSG in my mouth, because that's a little bit weird. So uh, instead, I'll push we're just going to call him the liar. A very interesting strategy to pick apart here. And his opponent, AWE2 Hostage, one of my uh, longtime Twitch subs and supporters of the channel, he told me the other day, uh, Hey, T90, you've got to check out this player. Something happened. So you'll notice, uh, 1v1 hideout game, it's Malay for blue. AWE2 Hostage is Chinese. Both very strong civilizations. Normally I talk about that. But instead, we're going to do something entirely different here. And we're going to talk about the in-game chat. And I'm going to show you more than one game. Okay, I'm going to get to that in just a moment. So, Blue started the game, and he said, Hey, man. Red has not responded to him. Um, I'm sure that AOE2 hostage is just very focused on his start, because Chinese starts can be awkward. Now, this MSG in my mouth player, he has picked Malay for every single 1v1 game that I've seen on his profile. And thankfully now, uh, as of this week, props to Microsoft, you can download Age of Empires 2 recorded games off aw2.net and ageofempires.com, and player profiles actually are good for something else. So I was able to download further recorded games to show you uh, more to see if this is going to happen. Look, man, I wanted to pick Magyars, he tried to say. Now, YouTube, he is clearly Malay, and he yeah. picks Malay for every 1v1 game. The results have come back, and we have determined that that is a lie. So, Blue starts off this game doing his thing. Obviously knows Malay. And he's like, oh, I meant to pick Magyars. Oh, this Magyars is right below Malay in the alphabetical list. And uh, Red says Malay are good. And Blue says, yeah, I don't know how to Malay. <laughs> and, and Red is like... Red's being super nice to him. He's like, oh, I feel bad for the guy. Fast Castle with Malay is weird. You know, he's, he's you know, talking through strats. And here they're going to have a not-so-friendly engagement and fight. Uh, Red actually wins that fight, which is a pretty big deal. Blue now lo no longer has a scout. But, like, Blue's lying about this. He knows Malay very, very well. Okay. Why is this going to lead to... Do you think that he does this... So the opposition relaxes a bit, so they feel like the opponent's not going to have an advantage, so they, they feel like the opponent is, uh, yeah. maybe the opponent will not go for the best strategy? Yeah. Maybe be too greedy? I, I don't know. I've really struggled to get my thoughts there. The reason I'm speeding up is because I'm going to show you many, many games. And what's fun is, I have not seen any game beyond this one. So, uh, this is either going to be a waste of an evening recording, or is actually going to be an amazing legend video, if this player does this for every game. So, starts off the game, picks Malay, obviously, on purpose, and uh, then says that he meant to pick Magyars. I don't know how to Malay, he says. Now, AW2 hostage is spot on. A fast casting with Malay is indeed quite weird. It's not easy, um, because they advance so fast to feudal. Oftentimes you make it to feudal and you don't have the resources to then go to castle age. But if you push in all your deer, and you go heavy on farms, which blue has done, and it's obvious blue only plays melee, so he has a build order down pat for this, uh, you can pull it off with a decent time. Now I'm going to just slow down for a moment just to show you something. So, you notice how blue is idling his town center? Pay attention to how many vills he's at, okay? He's not creating vills. I think here he's just saving up for Castle Age. Yes, saving res, saving res, saving res. After the stable, there he goes. He's on his way to Castle Age with a 1507 time. Really, I mean, it's possible with other sieves, but yeah, this is just power of the melee right here. And he's got a stable, and he's going to make another stable. Does he build it up against the Palisade walls like a lot of people do? Do their buildings act as a wall? No. Does he get double bid axe and horse color, eco upgrades that will last him throughout a very long game, which hideout often is? No. Is he creating more villagers right now? No. 
He's idling his TC to go all in. And Red actually calls him out. He says, LMAO, I don't do Malay. Gets 15 minute castle time. And Blue says, lol, I really think is the bonus. As if to say, ah, you have nothing to worry about, my friend. It's just the bonus. <laughs> okay, so Red's going to make knights. Now, I should point out that Malay elephants are really cheap. Unlike any other civilization that gets elephants. However, they don't get the second armor upgrade. And they don't get the third armor upgrade. So they're cheap, but the longer the game goes, the weaker they are. They're still really tanky units, and they're still good in many situations. But... Blue is obviously not trying to get this game to last very long. This is an all-in strategy similar to what you see at the high level from a player named Huang. Idling the TC. This guy right now has 12 elephants ready to go. The red is uh, going to build a TC out here. He's adding villagers, as you should. He's even adding knights right now. So he's got armor and attack on the knights. And we're going to have scale barding armor for blue. And here goes red. Let's see what he sees. Again, I'm going to speed it up because there's a lot I want to show you. Oh, man. Just passing. Oh, he sees it now. Red's got to be thinking, what? What on earth is that? Now, first thing I would do is uh, research pikemen. Starting to make some spears. Get some monks out. Blue is on the clock. And here he comes with... 15 big boys and wow av2 hostage with the quick walls good plays as he has so much more economy but there's so many elephants out here don't think one villager quick walling can save him i'll slow it down now a bit again i i want to make sure you guys can see the other games with me that's why i want to speed through the bits and pieces of this one that aren't really that important a red who has more eco who's doing all the right things now has 16 elephants Attacking his town center. At the 1300 level, I do not expect players to be able to deal with this. Blue's not looking at his economy at all. It's all about the production, all about the micro. Actually added scouts. Now, I thought about the scout edition, and I think it's calculated because he's lost games when players make monks. So he wanted to have a few scouts out to snipe the monks. Alright, so what was it? 16 elephants, 2 scouts... He destroys the TC. He destroys the knights. There's a few more for red. AW2 hostage is the one who sent me this game. He's like, T90. Just played this guy. He said he doesn't know how to play Malay. And he he huanged me. He, he went all in. No eco past Castle Age. And, and destroyed me with elephants. I've never seen anything quite like this. Both the, the lie and the chat. But also... The, the all-in play. I mean, I've seen Huang do it in a different way, but... Elephants with Malay? Why haven't people been doing this before? Uh, apologies in advance for uh, all the times you will face against this in, uh, face up against this in your ranked games. And AoE2 hostage calls GG. Still having more villagers. Okay, so... What I think would be really beautiful... Is if we can go through some of these other recorded games I have. Together. And... See if he does it again. All right, let's go. Now, on aw2.net, I don't have chat logs, so I actually have no way of knowing if he's going to say or do anything along those lines. Uh, first one is Co TX Slavs or Smalley. Let's go. He opened up the last game and said, Hey, man, I'm going to speed up through this YouTube. This is going to be more unique, like I stated. I'd like to do one more after this, maybe. MSG in my mouth. Hide out again. Fast castle map. So good for this. He wants to do it. Maybe it was just one trick thing. Uh, and then we have Slavs for red. And uh, I like Slavs a bit more than Malay. Kind of depends, but I'd say Slavs are pretty. No! Oh! He says, hey, man. Just like last game. Okay, red says, hey, good luck, have fun. Oh, come on, please do it. I swear, everything about this strategy just... And his profile picked Malay all the time makes me think he does this all the time! He did! He says, man, I wanted Magyars! Yeah. This is the joy that I feel when I investigate this 
when not recording, guys. Yeah. I just decided to try it tonight. See. I heard about it. I mentioned it to stream. Like, there's a guy who supposedly <laughs> does this all the time. That's what AB2 Hostage told me. He says, man, I wanted Magyars, no fish for me. Yeah, Malay are quite good if they can fish, but you can't on this map. And Red responds with a frowny face. Um, I guess Red might feel bad for the guy. Like, he might play worse, or he might chill and relax because of that comment right there. I think that's why Blue does it. Or maybe because it just makes him makes him laugh if he can pull it off. Oh, Red just lost a villager to a boar. That's a bit sloppy. It's all right. Good thing we're not uploading this to YouTube. <laughs> All right, but Blue even weakening the boar with his TC, but he—it's uh, kind of there's a lot of sloppiness within his eco. I think this is probably a great time to point out that I did investigate his profile and his wins and losses, and um, I I do not see any evidence to back up the eventual claims that this player might intentionally lose games so he can pick on weaker players. I I do not believe that to be true based on his profile. I, I saw this a few times on, uh, like, the Legend of Wall. People were saying that as well. And I also investigated there, because I don't want to give... I don't want to give a platform, or I don't want to give recognition to a person, to a player who intentionally throws games to pick on people. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I really no evidence of that. And if you look at his eco, it's, uh, while the uptime's impressive with Malay, there's... It's kind of just the one-trick pony thing. His eco's not that pretty. I will say his build order to to get to Castlage was really good last time. Um, pushed in his Ibex. Has he scouted the opponent? He has. Okay, okay, okay. 12.30 feudal time. Last time he went for a barracks. And then a stable blacksmith. Idled his TC till Castlage. And didn't create any more villagers in Castlage. Staying on 29 the entire time. I, I want to know if... You know, he's, he's going for this again, which it seems like it is. I want to know how specific this build is for him. Yeah. Right. He's lacking the food yet. Uh, still needs the food. Idling the TC is clicked up. Swasty. There he goes. Second stable? Yep. I wonder if this guy sets hideout as his uh, favorite map. Because he obviously needs to fast castle. But I feel like you can't do that on other maps at the 1300 level. And also, like, if it's arena, you can't go for the elephants against stone walls. Amazing castle time for blue. And he says, fast age up. I love it. Red says, yes. He's... It's the, it's, it's the same thing. He's still at 29 villagers. He's still making elephants. Now, what was it? I think it was 16 elephants last time, right? 16. Red scouts out here. See if he moves out with 16 or if it's not that specific. Maybe it's like 12. What's Red up to? Red uh, in Castle Age now himself. Has a stable. I assume at the 1300 level he'll build a TC here or here. Okay, there's a TC. So he's gonna boom with slaps, lots of food already. Speeding along here, it is 13 elephants, now 14 elephants, scale barding armor. He didn't get attacked last time. Still at 29 villagers. Wow. He did also get double bit X. I don't think he got that last time, but I could be wrong. There's slight differences. How many elephants did he have? Six. 16 elephants. Okay, 17. And also, he's getting light calf. Interesting. And here he goes. Okay, let's look at Red's reaction. How, how does Red react to this? Did Red scout that? Did he perhaps see the elephants? He's in here with the scout. He sees the stable. And now he sees another stable. And now he sees the elephants knocking on the door. Okay, so he reacts by making barracks. And clicking the pikeman upgrade, which is good. Just like the previous game, Red has 42 vills. Uh, 29 for blue, so eco... Uh, 44 vills now. Eco lead is definitely there for red. Can he turn the, the economy into military to defend from this attack? Blue with his 16 elephants. Goes right underneath the TC. 
and they have 12 base attack, and he's gonna melt the town center. And red didn't even garrison. Blue sent two, forward two scouts last time. He went leg cav this time. I think he does that because players go monks to counter the elephants. Full focus on aggro. This is like goth spam in imp, except it's a castle age strat. And I, I just, I don't think red knows how to deal with this. He was told that three TC boom is what you do on hideout. He doesn't know how to do deal with this. Guys, this might be a strategy that high-level players could use. It, it seems so effective. But more than anything, it's just hilarious to me because he lies to people. He says he doesn't know how to play the Civ, and then he plays the Civ, and he just won. I have one more game. Now, I maybe this video ends and he does not go for the strategy. Um... Let's see what we have here. I think I have two more, but I'm not going to show you all of them because that'd be a rather rather long YouTube video. Um, Acropolis. Hideout. I'm going to do the hideout one. Lithuanians, the monasteries work 20% faster. They have very fast trash. Uh, by all means, they have the tools to counter what blue will try and do, I believe. Let's see. Please do it again. Liar. Please do it again. He's playing against Biscuits, ain't for jam. Malay, Lithuanians, hideout. Third game in a row, at least for a cast. Hey, man. I like how... I like how nice people are. Oh, he says, oh, man, I wanted to pick Magyard. Can we talk about the fact he continues to misspell Magyars? Just bring that small detail up. Red laughs after saying, hey, bud, says, ha, 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 oh, no. I like how these guys are talking to each other. But blue is, like, blue is preying on people's kindness here. <laughs> He's trying to push in his deer. Not doing the best job at it. He tried to go for the pro move and just gives up, I guess. Huh. Will he say I, I cannot melee again? <laughs> red says fish boom. Oh, red, that's hilarious. <laughs> okay, and now blue says, oh, right, I have good fish traps in all caps. All right, buddy. Having seen three games, that one, now you got to work on your lying ability for the next time. Is that, that seems a little too obvious. Maybe it didn't to red. It's funny how that's two games now where fish have been mentioned because Malay are so good there. Red's like, yeah, you have good fish traps, buddy. And Red's going for a fast castle himself. Um, again, I, I spoke about how Lithuanians are so good here. They have the trash. They have the, the amazing paladins. They get plus one attack on their cav for relic. They have the faster working monasteries to get monks out. 20% faster is no joke. Um, no water on this map. Huge quadruple chinned brownie face for MSG in my mouth. AKA the liar. And biscuits ain't for jam says no. Biscuits, biscuits, excuse me, ain't for jam is probably feeling like I've got this game. I've got this. He doesn't know how to play Malay. He probably picked Lithuanians, you know? So he probably has the strat prepared for Lithuanians. He's probably very happy with the Civ. And he's, uh,. His build order looks almost perfect, except for the fact that he researched Loom. I don't think you need Loom on Hideout. I guess if your Vils are out here, you go for it, but... Whatever. I'm not going to be overly critical. It still seems like he can go for a fast castle with this. And there goes Blue. Now, remember, he didn't have Deer. But he also advances so much faster to the next stage. 29 Vils again. One Lumber Camp, one Mining Camp, Barracks. Probably stable. And probably blacksmith. He's going to do it again. And if I were to predict what happens here, Red's going to be on like two or three town centers with just one military building. And despite having the eco, I think he's going to get completely overrun. Ah, uh, if I had recorded games where he's lost, maybe I would show that here. If you guys want to follow up on this, let me know. Uh, spoilers, of course. 
blue. Ah, uh, he's going two stables again. Houses. It's like we're watching the same damn game over again and over again. What does he do on open map? What does he do on Arabia and Islands? An arena with stone walls. And what's the play for red? Right in the next stage. Red making knights. Forgot to make a house. Red actually worse off than the previous players. Not seeing a second TC for him just yet. Alright, blue still making those elephants. They're so cheap. He's not creating villagers. He didn't get eco upgrades, so saving those resources just for the elephantos. He sends a scout over here and knows that red is here and knows exactly what he wants to do. Red now. This almost looks like a fast imp play from red. I... I'm rather confused by the fact he does not have a second PC. It's almost like he wants to go heavy aggro with knights and surprise blue, you know? Instead of booming. But I've got news for you guys. Elephants are way better than knights, and they're actually cheaper than knights for Malay. There's the monastery. So Biscuits definitely wants to get those relics. I'm sure he sees quite a few of them. Making another stable. Yeah, so I think he just wants to get relics. We'll see if he can get enough monks out. He just says no. <laughs> he says no with the taunt. Alright, so he says no. Let's see if he can convert one. Right, there's a monk. Blue. Blue is the scout in there. Okay, loose the scout. He's sending this. Oh, it's a light cavalry. You're kidding me. Okay. Well, he, he will destroy the monk. He will also destroy the TC. Red does have more villagers because he's been creating villagers. But his vill lead is 10, and there's more than 10 villagers without a home now. Again, see the monk going for a conversion. I think, I think the monk gets a conversion, and it does, but the monk goes down to the light cap. <laughs> oh my god! No fish on this map. What do I do? Oh, yeah. I have amazing fish traps. You dirty, rotten liar. MSG in my mouth. Wins again. Okay, so I think this deserves a follow-up video. Based on what we see in chat. I, I think this deserves a follow-up video. Um, I'm going to download, I'd say, a dozen recorded games that he's played tonight. Before this is live. Because if I don't do that... <laughs> Enough people might see this where the next time they see this guy, uh, they'll know what he's going to do, you know? So a small part of me feels a bit bad because I, you know, this poor guy might have to pick a new strategy, but I've never seen anything like this. You know, the, the hey man, you know, the kind words at the start and then the strat. It's just, it's brilliant. It's devious, but it's brilliant. Uh... It certainly works on Hydel. I also could, in the follow-up video, maybe show what happens on other open maps. Because at the 1300 level, players are going for men-at-arms, they're going for crushes, they're going for scouts. These castle times were not bad at all. Uh, it's just, you know, Red really needed to adapt better there. What's crazy is, I don't know if it's all that easy to adapt to it. I mean, he already had the monastery. Like, what I would do if that happened is, I would... I would immediately add two monasteries and try and make monks, but if they arrive with 16, that's dangerous. I mean, you could do a better job at scouting their base and maybe you have an extra minute to react. But I, I, I'm going to try this, okay? I'm also going to try this. If, if this Malay strategy works or, or even doesn't work, I'll probably upload this in the form of a video at some point for you. But that is the legend of the liar. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments. Uh, is this... Does this cross an ethical boundary? Or is it all fair? You know, because in other games, you don't really have the ability to chat like this. And I feel like Age of Empires, Age of Empires community, everyone's really nice. You have the good luck, have funds. You have the GGs. You had players trying to give this guy tips on how to play with Malay, even though he knew it already. Does this cross an ethical boundary for you? Or is it not really that far? Like, he's, you know, he's not being insulting. He's not being aggressive. It's just a, a comment or two. And I think... And also, how much joy do you think that he's feeling? Like, I bet you it's so funny for him. 
to to get wins with this and just completely blindside people. Also, he probably plays a lot of games because the games will not go on for very long. Either he wins within 25 minutes or he loses within 25 minutes. Well, uh, YouTube, uh, I asked you for a lot of feedback. I'm going to ask you for one more thing. If you have the time and if you like entertainment and free stuff, um, I do one 24-hour stream a year. And I am doing a 24-hour stream on the 29th of August, which means that's that's within like 24 hours of this upload. I will be live for 24 hours. We'll have some incredible stuff. I'm actually going to go to this scene here, which is my goodbye scene uh, for streaming. And the reason I'm going to the scene is just so I can show you the schedule if you had interest. I know that you guys probably live all over the world, different time zones, different schedules. But the big thing about the 24-hour stream for me is I get to surprise you guys with something new every time. Uh, there's going to be a, a tournament announced. There's going to be some craziness. And that's the full schedule there in GMT time, if that helps you at all. Um, I will be giving away copies of Age of Empires 2 DE. So if you're someone who does not have a copy of Age of Empires 2 DE, you can try your luck with the giveaways. I'll be giving away uh, 10s and uh, 20s and 30s. That's not a thing. But anyways, I'll be giving away dozens of copies of the game, as well as different gaming merchandise and T90 merchandise. And overall, it's not about the length of time for me. Well, it is. But I want every single section of that stream to be fun. It's always a challenge, and it's always a good laugh. All right? So... If you guys have never stopped by the stream before, or if you just do it on rare occasion, uh, this weekend would be the time for you. And guess what? If you don't, it doesn't matter. I'll still upload all the best things to YouTube. I'll still keep uh, working away with you guys and keeping you guys entertained in whatever way I can. YouTube, I appreciate the support. I know things have been slow on the YouTube channel recently because uh, while well, prepping for the 24-hour stream and also my, my move was pretty stressful. But I'm back in business now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you where I see you.